My name is Maya and welcome to my channel. Today's video, as you can probably tell by the thumbnail and the title, is something kind of different than anything I've ever posted before on this channel, but it's something that I really enjoy doing and something that I've started doing more and more over the last couple years, and that's tying flies to use in fly fishing. So in a couple of my videos, I've done fly fishing, and it's not something that I make a ton of videos about, just because I don't go all that often. Um, usually I'll go in the winter trout fishing with a fly rod and sometimes I'll go pan fishing and bass fishing in the summer with a fly rod. I mainly stick to spin fishing only because the places that I fish are better for spin fishing because there's not a whole lot of room where I could bat cast if I were to go fly fishing. But when I do go fly fishing, I really enjoy it. And over the last couple years, I've really gotten into making flies on my own instead of going out and buying flies. And I've tried a whole bunch of different patterns and I've even just made some random patterns that I use at like ponds and creeks and stuff that work really well. So in today's video, I'm gonna be making a popper and I'm gonna be taking you along on that whole process with me. And poppers are one of my favorite flies to use because they work awesome for bass and panfish and pike. At the pond at our campground, little um, black fly imitations and frog imitations, just like the fish demolish them. They absolutely love the popper imitations just because that's what's naturally living around there. So poppers are one of my go-to um, styles of flies when I'm fly fishing. I'm really excited to start tying this fly and kind of bringing you guys along and showing you the process, showing you my process, and just having some fun making some lures. So without further ado, let's go tie that fly. So to start off, this is the hook that I'm going to be using and any hook with a straight back on it will work well for this project. The head of the popper is gonna be from this perfect popper kit and it's this like little white cone styrofoam thing and it's basically what makes this fly float on top of the water. And although this perfect popper kit is really old, the popper heads work really well. And this right here is the thread that I'm going to be using to tie this fly together with. So this is a wax thread and wax thread works best for fly tying because of the texture. And this is in the brown olive color. And to go along with that brown olive thread, this is the olive colored feather material that I'm going to be using for the tail. And although this is synthetic, you can choose to use real materials for the tail if you want. I'm also going to be using this whip finisher at the very end to tie off the thread and make sure everything is nice and secure. And then for painting the head of the popper, I'm using this Rainey's Water Base Foam Popper Paint. And really any popper paint will work, but just make sure that if you're gonna choose a paint, it's not gonna come off in the water when you're fishing with the lure. And finally, here is a paintbrush, which I'm going to be using to apply the popper paint onto the popper head. So the first step is going to be to put the popper head onto the hook. So you're just gonna take the popper head and there's this little like groove in the bottom and you just wanna use that groove and put it on the flat part, like the top part of the hook and then just push it on until it's snug. So then I'm going to put that hook with the popper head on it into the vise and I didn't mention this earlier but you are going to need a vise to make this fly. So now the real fun begins. I'm going to start by wrapping the thread right behind this styrofoam popper head and notice as I'm wrapping how I'm trapping the tail of the thread underneath the wraps and this just helps to make it stronger and keep it from coming undone. So after about 15 to 20 wraps of the thread, I can be pretty certain that this tail end isn't gonna come loose. So I'm just gonna snip it off. And then once the tail end is off, I'm gonna do a couple extra wraps just to get that little bit at the end secured down and be 100% sure that it's not gonna come undone. Then I'm just gonna wrap all the way back up to the base of the styrofoam head. Then I'm gonna take the little bits of the feather material that I've cut off and slowly start securing them down onto the fly. So I like to do between five and six wraps per little bit of feather material. And I like to add the material in slowly so I do little tufts of the feathers at a time. And although you can add it in all at once, I prefer kind of doing it separately because I think you have a better opportunity of um, kind of covering the whole hook with it and making it look a little bit more dynamic when you do it at certain times. But um, of course you can do this however you want and that's just my personal method for attaching these feathers onto the hook. And then finally, I'm gonna use the whip finisher to add a couple of whip stitches onto this fly so that it kind of knots the thread at the end and make sure that it's not gonna come undone in the water. After I finish with my whip stitches, I'm just gonna snip off the remaining thread. And now it is time to paint our popper. So I'm gonna start with the black paint, which I have a little bit on this paintbrush right here. And I'm just gonna start by covering the entire head of the popper. Now this of course is where you can get creative and you can do different designs with the paint 
and kind of um, personalize it, make it your own. Um, I'm going for kind of like a froggy feel on this lure. So I'm gonna do this black base on the popper head. And then later on, I'm gonna add some white dots on the side. And I think it's gonna look really cool in contrast with this olive green tail. And as you're painting the popper, make sure that you're turning it around and making sure you have all the areas of the head covered because you don't want any white spots left over. And when I'm painting the bottom here along this groove, I like to really flood it with paint because the paint will kind of go in the groove and will situate itself in between the styrofoam and the hook. And it'll make sure that that styrofoam head isn't gonna be going anywhere. After I get that initial layer of black paint onto the popper head, I like to go through and just kind of touch it up in certain areas, making sure that I have everything covered. Um, this look that I'm going for is that it's going to have a solid black head, so I really don't want any little bits of styrofoam showing through. So I just kind of go through and make sure everything is covered and touch up anything that needs touching up before I let it sit and dry for about 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna use the back of the paintbrush, which I've put a little bit of this white paint on to make the dots on the side of the popper. So this will help to make the dots nice and round. And as you can see, I'm just gonna do three along the side of the popper. So three on this side, and then I'm just gonna turn the popper over and then do three identical dots on the other side. And I looked at it and made sure that they were pretty evenly spaced. Of course, it doesn't have to be perfect, but as you can see, the bottom of that paintbrush makes really nice round white dots. And this is the finished product. I am super excited about how this fly came out. I absolutely love the contrast of that olive green tail against the black popper head with those white dots. It really gives it a froggy feel, if that's a thing. And that's exactly what I was going for. So I'm super excited about this finished product. All right, so I am going to wrap this video up right there. I know this video was a totally different style from anything I've ever really done before. It was more of like an informative style video and like almost a how-to, I guess. But I really hope that you enjoyed it because I had a really fun time making it and I've created a ton of flies this way and they all work really well. So after watching this video, I hope that you might have learned a little bit about fly fishing or about tying flies in general or just enjoyed watching the process of tying a fly. Thank you all so much for watching this video to the very end. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I guess I'll see you in the next video.